Okay. Lecture, we're back on. Chat, how is that looking? I'm good? All right, awesome, great. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Welcome back to the lecture. Um, so, if you weren't here for the first lecture, my name is Rowan Suresh, and I am one of the co-instructors alongside Sammy Alcotti. He's not here right now, but he's in the chat. He's in the chat, and he'll be answering any questions you guys have. All right, so what are the goals for the class today? So the goals of the class are, firstly, to go over class logistics. Secondly, go over what is Bash and what exactly we're we doing with it. Third, we're going to go into Bash setup for different operating systems. And finally, we'll do an intro to Bash. OK, just double check. Is, can you guys hear me OK? And is the screen OK? All right, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, Qatar Wi-Fi is kind of bad, and I apologize about that. All right, so first things first, general logistics, communication. Oh, thank you. Awesome. So communication, first things first, join the Piazza. So this uh, lecture will be up on the website very, very soon. Join the Piazza for almost all your questions regarding the class, homeworks, lecture content, uh, due dates, etc. You will find all that in Piazza. Discord for group communication. So we do a lot more than just that in Discord. Like I, you know, spam the chat when the Twitch is about to go up. If you have any questions, like I am on Discord pretty much 24-7. So is Sammy. We'll answer questions pretty much right away if you have them. So Discord's a great resource. The CS96 website is great for finding the syllabus, lectures, important links, etc. And email. So we want to be here for you. If you have any emergency, please email us. I we you know we're not gonna be mad if you reach out to us via email. We really want to help you guys out. And if you have a personal question, you should post on Piazza and post a private thing to us. Blag, uh, disappointing. OK. Homework will be assigned on Prairie Learn, and it's going to cover content from the lecture. It's pretty basic stuff for the most part. We're not going to ask you to do anything too extensive. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, we just want you to have like a reiteration of what you saw in the lecture. So welcome to part one of Bash. So our goals, we're going to take you from a Bash beginner to being a Bash wizard, literally hacking the matrix. You're going to learn all this today. So what is Bash? So Bash is a text-only interface which can be used for controlling Unix-based operating systems. So it's an acronym for Born Again Shell. So it's a pun on Stephen Born. Uh, it's a, he's the author of the direct ancestor of the current Unix shell, SH. And you can read more about that here at this link. Uh, it is used in many Linux machines and was used on Mac OS up until the new OS Catalina. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So why learn Bash? Well, firstly, it looks pretty cool. Uh, all like, the movies you see with the green text, like I'm going to ruin that for you now because you're going to see that it's all fake and you're going to be actually doing stuff through Bash properly. Uh, Bash is a standardized way of interacting with operating systems and its programs. So the standardization is really, really important for easy automation and manipulation of many different tasks. So for example, if you wanted to have something that helps you log into your SSH automatically, you can do that in Bash because it's standardized through many, many different systems. Should we download anything? I'm going to talk about that. No worries. And server-side tasks. So some VMs may restrict you to the terminal. 
So for example, if you want to work on a remote server, you need to use Bash because they don't have a GUI interface. They only have the terminal. And some VMs as well might restrict you to the terminal. So setup for Linux. If you are using Linux, you have no issues. There's no setup. If you are on, is there a lag? Rip, OK. Bash is better than CMD. OK, there seems to be decent ping here. Maybe it will catch up to you guys. If you're lagging, try and refresh. Otherwise, I will restart the stream to spam the chat. All right, so if you're on Mac, pre-Catalina, nothing. You have no issues. Bash is the default shell. But if you're on Catalina, which I'm sure most of you are, you don't really do. Ha you, you can use ZSH. You don't really have to make that many changes. So the default shell in Catalina is ZSH. However, for our purposes, the difference between Bash and ZSH are pretty much ne negligible. You really don't need to do a whole lot. And you can swap to using bash by simply opening up your terminal over here and typing in bash. It'll take you to bash. But we're going to use ZSH because that's prettier looking and it really doesn't matter for the purposes. All right. Next, setup for Windows. So Windows, kind of a pain because Windows is not a Unix system. However, there are many ways you can get around this. So firstly, if you're on Windows 10, you can pretty easily set up a Ubuntu Linux shell. You can find that over here in this URL. You may also want to download a virtual machine. So you can get something called a local VM. You can download VirtualBox, which will essentially let you run a Linux machine within Windows. You can also use the EWS machine. So if you're new, you might not know what that is. Essentially, the school has a whole bunch of engineering virtual machines that you can use. Whoa. I clicked the link on accident, my bad. The school has a, let me go back to full screen. The school has a bunch of Linux machines that you can use uh, for your own schoolwork. But just to know, you will need to connect to the UIUC network, so either living on campus or using a VPN. And if you're in an earlier form of Windows, you can come to office hours and we will help you. Another cool resource is, let me open up a new window. It's called rappel.it. I'll show it to you later. Basically, it's a, I'll post the link up here. Essentially, you can run shell in your Windows, in your um, Windows browser. All right, so let's start off with the basics of what control in bash looks like. So you have a bunch of commands. Oh yeah, for the Kahoot. Let's do that right now, actually. If you are in the chat, join the Kahoot. This is the code. If you don't know how to join, just follow the instructions here. Use your net ID as your name. I'm going to drop that into the chat here. Don't worry, I will play the music when we're doing this. I just don't want it to interfere with what I'm saying right now. And if there's any mods in the chat, can you just keep spamming the code? There we go. All right, cool. Uh, just keep joining. I will give you guys a minute once we actually get into it, too. So I want all you guys in there. So commands, we interact with the, bash, with the bash command line through a variety of commands. So these are unique statements or keywords that indicate specific tasks. So a lot of it is memorization, but eventually will be very natural. So something to note is sometimes you write a single command like ls or list, and it'll do exactly what you want. But some commands need arguments. So arguments are further variables that you put after the command to execute a task. So for example, the copy command at cp needs two arguments, the original file name and the name of the new file you're making. So this will make more sense later. Uh, the code should be higher up. You can scroll through. Uh, the mods will be posting in the chat too. All right, flags. Another thing that's important in Bash, and this might seem a little confusing right now, but once we get into the actual practices, it'll make a lot more sense. So a lot of commands have other behavior that can initialize with flags. And these come at the end of the command. And you can find all these flags in the man pages. So if this makes no sense to you, don't worry. You will be a pro at this by the end of the lecture. So for our purposes, imagine this as the system we're using. So this is my computer. Uh, this is the folder we're working with. And this is what's inside the folder. And to make that super clear, 
I have this up here. So this is our intro to bash folder and within it are all those directories that you saw in that diagram. Is this size okay for people or should I make this bigger? I'll wait a sec for you guys to reply. Lag, all right. Okay, so if there was lag, I'll repeat myself. Is this size okay for people or should I make this bigger? Bigger, all right. Fortunately, this can't be made that much bigger. Yeah, that's the most you can get out of there. All right. So, first command. LS. So a lot of these commands are pretty phonetic. LS is short for list. So LS will list all the files in our current directory. So its usage is pretty, pretty basic. You just type LS and enter, and the terminal will print all the files in the current directory. So as for your reference, this is intro to bash, and these are the files in there. Um, so now I can just type LS here, and all those files that we saw are here. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward. We're gonna start off with the basics and we're gonna build up to more complicated stuff. Also, if you have any questions, just drop it in the chat. Next. Oh yeah, the flag. So, notice how ls is the command. This dash a indicates the flag. So, flags indicated by a hyphen and, and a short letter or string and then an argument. This one has no argument. So this will list all the files, including hidden files. So A is for all, pretty basic. Hidden files are files that start with a dot, and they're not visible in the GUI or by just using ls. So if you notice, if I go back here, there's this hidden file, but you can't see that over here in the GUI interface. So if I do ls, obviously it's not there. But if I do lsa, all right, we got a bunch more files here. So what are these files? The first one, is a hidden file. So if I open that for you, you'll learn this command. We can see that this is a real file, has real content in it, but we can't see it. .ds store, so this is purely just for Mac OS. Uh, what it has is essentially, if I go into this mode, in Macs you can keep your apps anywhere you want. And all that data is stored in .ds store. So it's essentially how it's formatted and how and other properties within the folder. Then you have this dot and dot dot. So what dot is, is the current directory. Dot just indicates the current directory that you're in. And then dot dot is the upper directory. So if I were to look over here, the upper directory would be desktop. Does that make sense? Any other questions about this? If not, I'm just gonna move on. Our next command is pwd, or print working directory. So as the title suggests, this function will print the path to your current directory. So usage, like ls, it has no arguments. You just type pwd and enter, and the terminal will print the path to the current directory. So pwd, enter, and we can see the full path there up until intro to bash. And check OBS to see if we have decent ping. All right, cool. Okay. Let's clear that up. Also, the clear command is super useful. It basically just moves things up. So like if, you're, if you have a bunch of text here, you can just type clear, and it'll scroll up so you're back at the top. Okay, lag. Did you guys, can I explain more? Sure. What specifically do you want me to talk about? Uh, my last M2. Okay, yeah, so if you're in Windows, uh, Bash won't work. But here, let me show you guys this um, right now because I think it's really helpful. This website, repl.t slash languages slash bash. If you're on Windows, open this up so you can follow along. Essentially, it's just an online virtual machine that you can use to run Bash commands. So everything I showed, you can see here. You can 
print your working directory, you can clear, all that cool stuff. Seven so Windows, try this. Sounds good. Is Git Bash the same as Bash? Um, there are, so Git Bash has a different purpose to Bash. I'd say just try using the Ubuntu version because that works really well. That's what I use personally on my Windows machine. It's pronounced replit, all right, my bad. Lag. Oh, the meaning of dot dot. Okay, so I'm gonna print, so I'm gonna go into this folder here called directory one, okay? So if I go into that folder and I do ls, right? Or I do lsa, sorry. See, dot dot indicates the upper level folder. So it indicates intro to bash. So dot dot means the folder that's just above. So whatever encapsulates that folder. Does that make sense? Okay, no more questions, I'm gonna move on. So, just a reminder of what our file system looks like. Can you do just dot, dot, dot? Let's find out, dot, dot, dot. Yep, it pulls you up three times on my desktop now. So I list, I can go into my intro to bash and then back to directory one. So yeah, you can do dot, 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 dot. All right, so just a reminder, this is our file system and we are in the intro to bash folder right now. Can I demonstrate ls dot dot? Sure. So if I do ls and an argument, it will basically list the files of that directory. So if I do ls regularly, it'll just list these files. But if I do ls directory one, it'll list the files that are inside directory one. So similarly, if I do ls dot dot, it'll list the files in my desktop, like so. I can probably turn on my camera so you can see me. Cool. How do I select intro to bash? Oh, sure, I can show you. So when I open up a terminal for the first time, if I print the working directory, I see I'm in this folder. So this doesn't look pretty familiar, but we can list the files and we can see if there's something familiar here, desktop. So I use the CD command, which I'm gonna show you right after. Desktop, and it'll take me to the desktop. I list the files again. I see intro to bash is there. I do CD, intro to bash. And now I'm back in the intro to bash folder. Is it similar to command prompt? Yes, but the commands are totally different. There's a lot you can't do in command prompt that you can do in bash. But yes, it's very similar. No, we're not learning command prompt. Command prompt has a totally different set of commands. We're only learning bash right now. Okay. So I'm gonna continue on. So CD, so this will kind of clear things up a little bit. CD stands for change directory. So CD will allow you to change directories in your bash. So right now, if I'm in intro to bash, I can use CD to move to lower folders or I can go up to upper ones like so. So I'll go back to intro to bash. So the usage is you type cd and then your path to your new directory from the current directory. How do you do dot, dot, dot again? You write cd space dot, 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 dot. Um, so then hit enter and you will change your directory to the new directory. If the directory does not exist, the terminal will print an error message. So let's try that for example, cd fake folder. No such file or folder exists. So if you can't see it into things that doesn't exist, your computer will prevent you from doing that. So if I, for example, if I do cd new directory, we'll change the current directory to the new directory. So we're at intro to bash right now. All right, so there's a bunch of questions about command prompt and windows and bash. Let me just explain. So the default terminal in Linux machines and Mac OS machines, because they're both Unix are, is bash. It was Bash for Mac, but unfortunately at Catalina it got replaced with ZSH. ZSH is slightly newer, it has a few extra features, but for our purposes they're essentially the same. The differences won't affect what we're learning right now. Command prompt is Windows' own scripting 
terminal. The commands you need for command prompt are totally different to what you use in Bash. But what you can do is get Ubuntu Linux. Uh, you get an Ubuntu Linux shell within uh, Windows that'll basically work exactly like Bash. And once these slides go up, uh, Sam, you have access to slides. If you want to drop the link in, please do that uh, so people can use that. You can also dual boot. That's pretty fun too. OK, so for CD, what our demo we're going to do now is go from intro to bash, our red folder, to directory one. So we've done this a couple times already, but I just want to demonstrate that. So notice I'm in intro to bash right now. If I print the working directory, I'm in intro to bash. So CD directory one. And now when I print the working directory, we are in directory one. Does this make sense? How do you open the terminal? OK, if you're on a Mac, you can just hit Launchpad, type in terminal, and open up terminal. I personally use iTerm. It's an app you can download online. It just looks nicer, but the functionality is the same. Also, if you have any questions at all, please drop in the chat. Uh, if you have questions afterwards, I'll stay on to answer them. OK, so does CD make sense? And any of the first three questions, first three commands make sense so far? Command prompt and bash can do the same things, yes. But ba I do think bash has more functionality and there's a lot of things you can download online for bash that makes it a lot more powerful. Whereas uh, command prompt doesn't have that much support. Are we gonna need bash soon? Absolutely. The reason we're teaching you bash is because you're gonna use bash to run a lot of things. So for example, um, you can run Python scripts from bash. So I can you know, run Python from here, do a you know, You can run Python in here, right? You can do a lot of powerful things in Bash. We're going to do all of Rust in Bash. A lot of your project will be done in here, too. So Bash isn't a programming language, but you can use Bash scripting, which we'll cover in the next lecture, to do some commands. It's just a bunch of commands uh, to control your computer. The reason we teach you Bash is because it lets you do what you can already do in your computer and even more. So I'm going to move on uh, in the interest of time. So CD continued. So if you type CD and start the path with a forward slash, you will use what's called an absolute path. So this means, so what you're using here to move from directory one to the next directory is called a relative path. You're moving relative to where directory one is. So if I go from here to directory two, I can write C directory two, and it's, it's in relative distance. But if I do a forward slash, I'll use an absolute path. So it's not relative to anything. It'll basically start from exactly where um, my like, file system starts. And as we said before, if you type cd dot dot, you will move up a directory. So let's actually show you this absolute path. So I do pwd. If I do cd forward slash users, like so, and hit enter. Now when I print the working directory, I'm back here. I didn't move relative to anything here. I went directly to the users folder. Does that make sense? Relative and absolute paths can get confusing, but it's very important to learn this now because you will be using this a lot for scripts you're writing. Any questions about that? Uh, Ricky Zhao, try just Googling online shell and find the REPL Replit link. What's the difference? But is that about what's? Yeah, sure. I can totally explain that again. So if you're, let's say you're here, right? Let's go back to um, the intro to bash folder. So from here, notice that we have a bunch of files here. If I cd to directory one, like so, without the forward slash, I'm moving relative to where intro to bash is. So for example, if I write cd directory one here. It won't move me, oops, sorry. If I write cd directory one here, it won't move me directory one because there's no directory one within this folder. My previous move was relative to where I was. But I can use something called an absolute path where instead of moving up, 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 I can just go directly there. So I can do cd 
forward slash users forward slash row on Suresh, and it'll take me directly to this folder here. I didn't have to move relative to anything. I just went directly there. So does that make sense? Any questions about the relative and absolute paths? Make sense? Cool. We're going to move on. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go cd dot dot to move from directory one to intro to bash. So let's get back there. So cd desktop, intro to bash, directory one. So now I'm going to print the working directory. Use cd dot dot. Oh, cd dot does nothing. The dot, single dot is your current directory. Won't move you anywhere. CD dot dot will move you up one to intro to bash. So notice we run from directory one here to intro to bash up here. All right, I'm gonna move on. So now we're gonna learn cat. Cat is, let me turn my video for so you guys can focus on this. Cat is short for concatenate. So cat is used to display the contents of a file. So your usage is cat file you want to read and the terminal will print the contents of the file. So for example, you can just write cat file name and it'll display the contents in the file to read in this file. So for example, let's list. So let's list in here. We see this two files here. There's a text file and a Python file. Let's do cat file1.txt, hit enter. This is a file with some random data, data all, originally called file.txt. We also cat the Python file, and we can see there's a function here. Let's actually run the function. So to run the function, we write Python3, and it printed a little triangle for us. Does that make sense? Does any questions about how cat works? Anything, any questions about cat? My feed might be a little delayed. When you cat an image, so often you can't cat an image, but I term, oh, so cat is short for concatenate. It'll let you read a text file or any kind of file, to be honest. Uh, but if you take an image, you can't concatenate it because it'll just read. Actually, let's, let's do that. I think that's a fun experiment. We're going to use my professional headshot. Uh, So if I do cat professional headshot, yikes, what is this? So this is the metadata of the file because why is it called concatenate? Because you're like, that's a great question actually. Why is it called concatenate? I think it's because you're kind of reading it line by line. Let's just allow this to go on. Cancel. All right, I'm going to stop this because this is getting on my nerves down. So why did it print this? So obviously if you open the image normally, it looks fine. It's a regular photo, you've seen this photo. But when we tried to cat it, this happened. The reason this happened is because an image is made up of bits and bytes. So the way an image is formatted is you have a header which denotes what the file is. So it'll tell you it's a you know, Word document or an image file and the rest of it is a bunch of bits to denote the actual image itself. Unfortunately, if you try to read those bits as text, it won't work out and you have these weird symbols, like these like weird Unicode characters. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? That was a lot of information I just threw at you guys. So if you have any questions about that, ask me right now. Oh, sorry, I didn't say printing the arrays of an image. I meant when you... Oh, no, so cat will just read the file. So cat will just read the file no matter what it is. So if I go to... Um, so let's... If I go to intro to bash, right, and I open this folder, this file, sorry, this is all it says. This is random text. If I cat it, it'll just read the file. 
but if I cat an image, an image is made of a bunch of bits. All files are made up of bits, but those bits don't translate into text characters. Those are just a bunch of bits that denote colors and such. When you try to print it out as text, you get those weird characters that we saw earlier. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? Oh, I use iTerm, so this is called iTerm. Uh, I personally like it just because it lets me do a bunch of things, like I can see what my git status is, it just looks cool. Yeah. I'm going to move on from cat now. Oh. Now we're going to learn touch. So touch will create a file in the current directory, and the type of file depends on the extension. So you can make any kind of file. Can we use VS Code? Absolutely. I use VS Code. It doesn't matter what you use, though. Touch will create a file in the current directory. The type of file depends on the extension. So you can just write touch file name dot file extension, and you will create a file in the current directory with that name and extension. So touch text file dot txt will make a text file. Touch python file dot py will make a python file. Touch html file dot html file will make an html file. So we're going to go into directory one, and we're going to create a new file here. So just for your reference, in directory one right now, we have just the directory in this file. So let's go to directory one. Now we're going to touch, what do we call the file? New file.txt, new underscore file.txt. Enter. Oh, my bad. I used a question mark there. Now when I ls, we can see new file.txt there. And there's also, you probably saw it get animated made there. How do we remove a file? We're going to get right to that. You guys are one step ahead of me. So that's how you touch a file. We also touch different kinds of files. We can even touch a file with no extension. What kind of file is it? It has no extension. It doesn't matter. You can touch a Python file. You create Python files, you know, like python.py. You can touch Excel files. It really doesn't matter. Bash and terminal are essentially like interchangeable. Like terminal here is ZSH or Bash. Like that's the default. Like it will do everything you want it to. LS, CD, print working directory. It'll do all those things. Okay, so moving on. Remove. RM, remove. So RM will delete a file permanently. So I need to make that very, very, very clear. RM will delete a file permanently. It will not put it in the trash. That file is gone. You will not be able to get it back. So the way you use it is rm file name, and the file will be permanently deleted. So chat, mess, just write rm permanently deletes files and just spam it in the chat so everybody sees it. rm permanently deletes files. Be very careful with it. So we have a bunch of these files here. Let's delete them. rm. Actually, let's go back here for a sec. So we'll do this first, rm, so watch over here, rm asdf, rm python, whatever that was, deleted, rm new file.txt, deleted. All that stuff is gone. And also it's not going to be my trash, it's permanently deleted. I'm not going to RM my, oh, that's cool though, watch this. If I go to this directory here, so watch. If I do RM directory, it won't delete a directory unless you use RM RF. So RM RF is a recursive command. So what it does is it will delete the file or the directory and all its underlying components. This is super, super dangerous. If you do RM RF at like your users page, you will lose all your files, all your users, everything is gone. So for example, if I make a directory here, new folder with another folder in there, right? So if I ls now, you see the untitled folder there. If I try to rm the untitled folder, it'll say you can't, it's a directory. But if I do, I want you guys to see this getting deleted. If I do rm rf untitled folder, everything is gone. Everything inside the folder is gone. If you rm system32, big rip is what I'm trying to say. 
RM is very dangerous. You can you, please try to avoid this as much as possible. You can even alias it to something else, like move it to trash instead. Be very careful with this command. So as you saw, we took that file and we deleted it. Okay. Before we go on, one last command: make make uh, make directory. So mkdir is short for make directory. Mkdir will make an empty directory. So it's pretty basic. You it's like touch. You search mkdir and directory name, no extension, and you will create a new directory. So we're going to go into directory two, and we're going to make a new directory. So so notice that we're here in directory two. Go to mkdir. What is this called? New directory. And there's a new folder here that we've just made. All right. So with that being said, are there any questions at this point about any of the commands, about file navigation, about that weird thing we did at the image, anything at all right now? Drop them in the chat. Yo, sorry, directory equals folder, yeah. Okay, sudo, we're, we are gonna cover that in the next lecture. Sudo essentially gives you what's called root access. Basically think of it as God mode, you can do whatever you want. The system itself will try and protect you and your files by preventing you from deleting stupid things. Like, you don't delete core files, but if you do sudo rm some core file, the computer will usually let you do that. And that is really bad, so be very, very careful and only use it when you totally know what you're doing. Can we RM a directory? Okay. So I was going to get to this. If you RM a directory, it won't let you. There's a different command for that. But if you use RMRF, like we covered here, RMRF will delete the directory and everything inside it. If you're on the terminal, how can you save it? Could you expand on that question, Sanam? How do I move things to trash? I will teach you how to move things to trash very soon. Yeah, you can use this as a move command to let you move it to trash. If you make the directory, where is the new directory? Good question. Uh, it'll be in the, in the current directory that you're in. So if I'm in directory two, if I ls, it'll make the directory in here, so some name it'll make it here in the current directory. Um, okay. Why am I teaching these dangerous things? These things aren't dangerous. These things are very, very useful for your computer. If misused, anything can be dangerous. Like I could write, you know, I could do, I could make a perpetual while loop in Python that'll eat up all your RAM but I'm not gonna not teach you Python because it could be dangerous, right? These are all tools that you can use depending on how you use them is up to you. Okay. Any final questions? You guys have a couple seconds before I... All right, Kicker, if you have a, it's how to make dark anywhere, I believe you can just do make dir. Um, so let's say I'm in directory one. You can just do like mkdir and you can write directory two. Like you can basically put the path there. So I'm in directory one right now, as you can see. But if I do mkdir like this, it'll make it, it'll follow the path and put it there. So that the argument, the optional argument there is the path that'll let you make the folder there. How do you move a directory? I will cover move very shortly. I just want to answer questions about the previous things first. If you opened Vim, all right. If you opened Vim and you can't get out, just press escape, colon, Q, exclamation mark. Don't get stuck in Vim. So if you want to utilize bash, so right now I'm actually using ZSH. Uh, but if you want to use bash, you can just write the word bash and you will enter bash. This is the exact same as before. All your, everything that you want is there, all the same commands. 
I like ZSH just because it looks cleaner and the, the chain difference between them don't affect me in my day to day. Don't delete terminal. Oh yeah, sure. I can totally plan to make a Python file. You just do touch some name and just put dot .py as the extension. Make sense? All right. With that being said, we're going to go to the Kahoot. I don't want you guys to not get attendance. So Kahoot, here's the code. I'm